Hi guys, Greg at Best Choice Trailers. So I'm gonna take you for a walk around a Big Tex 102 by 25 plus five tandem dual 22 GN gooseneck deck over. Take you for a walk around this unit, show you all the features. Pretty much most everything you see here is standard equipment with the exception being the full width ramps you see at the back. Uh, I did go ahead and stand one up so you can get an idea what it looks like and then fold the other one down. Uh, I refer to these as full width ramps to make it easy because every brand's got a different name for it. Uh, Big Tech's going to call it the Mega Ramp. So again, most everything else you see on this particular unit uh, is standard equipment. So it's going to be a 25 on this particular one. That'd be your flat deck plus five. That would be uh, your beaver tail with a full width ramp. So overall, this would be a 30 footer. Weighs in at 6,300 pounds. Uh, they GVW this at 23.9, and it does have tandem dual 12. Th I'm sorry, tandem dual 10,000 pound Dexter axles on it. It's going to give you a net legal payload of we'll say 24,000 for quick math minus the 63. Uh, Going to give you 17. Would that be 17? Uh, seven. Yeah, 17,700 pounds of uh, net payload that you can put on the trailer. Hopefully, mostly over the axles. So I want to point one thing out while I'm toward the rear of the trailer. So on the full-width ramps, if you never had them, they're awesome setup. Uh, they basically level out, make you a full flat 30-foot deck. Uh, most manufacturers, you're going to have 102 inch outside to outside from the channel across. It'll be 96. Typically, these ramps measure about 44 to 45 inches. Leaves you about a two, three inch on either side that it doesn't come out quite flush, <clears throat> and you got maybe a four inch five inch gap in between so you pretty well got full width loading some folks might say what if i got a narrow front tractor or whatnot how's that gonna mess me up well the answer is you're probably not going to be all the way across so you're gonna go to one side a little bit or the other but i, I wanted to point out big techs uh rather than standing straight up they're kind of at an angle so you still get the benefit of most of that so a traditional flip over ramp if you had a trailer before uh, you're going to lose this last five foot. The benefit of this is if you have any piece of equipment, truck, etc., you're going to gain the majority of that rear beaver tail. Now, the reason this doesn't stand straight up, uh, and I've never had a, a talk with their engineer, but it would seem intuitive enough, you block your stop turn tail lights if you put it up the whole way. So I'm assuming the way, the reason they put theirs on the angle is so you still have some visibility to your stop turn tails uh, in the up position. You also notice it's slotted. I uh, get a little bit better flow through there. It is still a self-cleaning dovetail as you'd see uh, on most of your deck over trailers. So let's go up front, we'll start there, show you all the features of this unit. It does have quite a few uh, different features on it. Up front, we'll start with the coupler. So typically you're gonna see a 25K round coupler this actually has a uh, 30k square your square couplers typically are going to be 30s a little bit heavier uh, still going to be a 2 and 5 16th inch gooseneck ball uh, is spring loaded on your on your latch assembly so if i open it up it's going to spring shut as you close it you've got your set bolt uh, to where you can set uh, those typically they normally say about 35 pound torque most guys just set them with a crescent wrench uh top line jack is super slick so unlike uh most of yours where you're gonna loosen your set bolt and you've got pin adjustment this is nice because you got infinite adjustment you can wind it just like a top line jack and have it set at the exact right placement typically on goosenecks if you're familiar they've got holes every four inches roughly so you're doing four inch adjustments in a clip where this uh much much nicer from that standpoint this also has the zip breakaway cable. If you're not familiar, these flex, unlike your traditional cables that you've got extra slack and whatnot. So that would clip onto your, your uh, breakaway hook. Safety chains, there's a holder inside the, the neck. This is also the blue uh, cold weather wiring harness instead of your black, which is typically gonna be your regular harness. These will stay flexible down to negative temperatures. Another neat feature, if it can catch it, if it can zoom on it, uh, they actually color code them, so that's something you don't typically see in the industry, but it'll tell you which color goes where. Typically, you have to do it with the test probe by function, uh, but this actually gives you the colors, which is nice. You've got a little 
reinforcement underneath the neck. Uh, got a 12 inch I beam on the mainframe, the vertical and the neck. Then you've got your doubler or your neck gusset going from the vertical to the horizontal and then from your vertical out to the side rail of the trailer. Uh, that's pretty commonplace. Some manufacturers don't do it or they'll do that one and not this one. They've got both those and then also in the back of the neck, you've also got your reinforcement um, to stiffen up the neck. Pretty typical in the industry, dual jacks. These are your 12K jacks with your center toolbox there. Uh, this is pretty nice. A lot of manufacturers I fight with getting these pressed in, out. Uh, normally there's a little tab that you can adjust. This is slick. It's actually got a holder that's built in. It sounds like a little detail, but if you use trailers a lot, it's nice. It's also got uh, Zert on the jack for easy serviceability. Well, I should say of the extension bar, but then also your jack has your two grease Zerts as well. So fairly simple, but well put together. Uh, LED sealed beam lights, standard equipment. You've got your steps on both sides, standard equipment. You've got rub rail, uh, stake pocket, and then you've got your chain spool or pipe spool. Uh, roughly two foot centers, so about every foot you've got a tie down in addition to the rub rail. Uh, side rail on these is six inch channel. Sometimes you'll see five, sometimes you'll see on some of the more economical stuff, some angle iron. I've seen flat stock, I've seen all kinds of stuff. Uh, this is channel. Sometimes on the other heavier duty ones, you'll see tube as well. Tube is nice, tube is heavy duty, it gives you a lot of strength uh, per pound, but it does rust from the inside out, especially for hot shotters. Uh, channel is one of your heavier built ones that uh, still gives access to it um, to, you know, washing out the inside, not getting uh, stuff laying there and creating problems. So again, we set a side step up front on both sides. Uh, two by eight pressure treated decking, but I wanted to point to this. So your I-beam mainframe, if you can see your I-beam mainframe, it would be a pierced frame, which is going to get you down to about a 32 inch deck height. Typically deck overs are gonna be about 36. Another way that you can generally tell, uh, if they got tread plate over the the uh, the wheels, generally that would be a telltale sign most times. But if you see the I-beam, it's definitely gonna be a pierced frame. So if somebody says, do you want a pierced or non-pierced beam trailer? What they're asking you is, do you wanna be a lower 32 inch height or do you wanna be a taller 36 inch height? And for most, I would say the pierce is probably going to be beneficial because, you know, if you're loading equipment or whatnot, a lower height is generally going to be better. The only downside to a pierce frame, occasionally we'll get a farmer or similar where they'll say, hey, I'll take the higher deck height so I got a tiny bit more ground clearance at the rear. Typically, uh, you do the math, if a beaver tail is five and the ramp is five, if that regular non pierce frame trailer sits four inches higher, it's going to give you maybe two more inches of clearance at the rear end. So again, uh, this is a pierced beam. Pierced beams generally are gonna cost you more money. In today's dollars, uh, if a manufacturer doesn't do pierced standard, you're probably looking at about $1,000 to do so. What they're gonna be doing is basically exactly what it says. They're gonna pierce the beam. They're gonna put the cross member through the I-beam instead of on top of. Uh, so literally the cross member is going through the beam to lower the height. And then you'll see the cross members are structural channel not formed they're going to be 16 inches on center and then roughly every third cross member you're going to have a reinforcement gusset like so let me crawl back here a little bit farther so i want to show you this this is definitely one of the key things that's different on uh, this versus most trailers hdss suspension standard equipment those are a lot heavier hangers than what you're going to find on a typical trailer it's also an adjustable trailing suspension it's also 100,000 pound tensile strength steel it's not mild steel uh, it's also got, if I can get you a good zoom in, it's got uh, your heavy duty three leaf suspension, not your typical trailer suspension. This is basically, I'll say a copy of or similar to the Hutch 9700 suspension that's found on semi rigs that are not air ride. Let me take you to the center, center hanger. So that's your center slipper. If you look at a regular slipper spring suspension, it's gonna look much different. There's your adjustment. So these are Dexter axles. It says 48 inch spread axle. It gives you your wheel torque spec. This is an oil bath hub. If you're not familiar, it just takes uh, standard gear oil. Uh, you've got your 
uh, black wheels with a load range E 10 ply radial tire. This trailer does have a center mid marker light. Mud flaps, standard equipment. Let me show you the rear hanger as well. So again, the running gear on this is much heavier than most trailers. I can only assume that at some point Big Tech's made the decision. It was a few years ago to go to HDSS because more and more guys are doing hot shot work, putting a lot more miles on these than trailers like this used to see. And it's just a much heavier suspension that kind of is a nice middle ground, uh, the HDSS between traditional suspension on 10, 12K axles and what you would see on those semi rigs. And that is why this is a 15,000 pound per axle suspension system. So again, it is kind of a happy medium between an over the road truck suspension and what you'd find on a normal trailer. So as I showed you in the back, you've got your ramp flattened out, makes a flat level 30 foot deck. And then the ramp in the upright position, like I said, it's gonna be kind of pushed forward a little bit. So you got visibility that light again is my assumption on that. I'm gonna show you how easy this ramp is. This is a monster ramp, or I should say a mega ramp. And check out how easy this guy goes down. I gave it a tiny bit of assist just not to bang your eardrums. But some folks say, how hard is it? And the answer is, I got a 12 year old boy that can do this, no problem. So if he can do it, I'm sure you can do it. It does have double springs on it as opposed to your typical ramp. Wouldn't have that many springs on it. This is available in different lengths, starting at 25 foot up to 40 foot. You can get it with 10, 12, or 15,000 pound axles. The heavier axles would be a different part number. Instead of a 22 GN, you'd be moving into a 25 GN. Trailer is powder coated. As mentioned, they are Dexter brand axles. There are, is different equipment you can order on this, but as you see here would be certainly one of the more common ways this would get sold. Uh, and as mentioned, this is about a 6,300 pound empty weight trailer. We do stock different brands. We also stock different sizes, different equipment. Feel free to check out our website. Uh, currently we're stocking somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,250, 1,300 trailers. Not much we don't have for most folks. If this isn't the right trailer, we probably got the one it is or we can certainly get it ordered in. Website is www.bestchoicetrailers.com or you can feel free to give us a ring at 717-220-4220. Thanks for looking.